Welcome to the Pomerantz Mentor, sponsored by MRI Education Foundation. And our series today is a continuation on the hip, focusing on femoroacetabular impingement, but a specific type, the pincer vi variety of femoroacetabular impingement, so-called type 2 impingement. This form of hip impingement is also known as CAM2 impingement, or FAI2. Protrusio acetabuli, or a deep acetabular cup, is one of the hallmarks of this type of impingement, although there are other causes. But for the most part, the acetabulum plays a central role in FAI2. Let's look at some key lines on a radiograph. We have labeled the acetabular line. This series of arrows from proximal to distal demonstrates the ilioischial line. The distance between the acetabular line and the ilioischial line should remain relatively constant in that the separations between these two lines should never cross over one another. The distance should remain relatively modest. It should be greater than three millimeters in men and six millimeters or less in women. In the situation of coxa profunda, the acetabular line touches or crosses the ilioischial line, and the situation of acetabular protrusion may ensue. This is a difficult concept to understand on a simple frontal radiographic analysis. So let's get a little more simple and at the same time a little more fancy. This is an example of a radiograph demonstrating coxa profunda. This time, a femoral cause. There is broadening of both the femoral head and the femoral neck. There is also, although difficult to see, acetabular retroversion. In other words, there's crossing of these lines that we've discussed previously. This combination of too large a head and too large a neck along with acetabular protrusion, or an acetabular cup that's too deep, produces a compound situation in which FAI2 predominates. We'll see this better again with a more simple, yet more complex analysis using cross-sectional imaging. Here is a simplified frontal, or as you know it, coronal diagram. A represents the anterior acetabular wall. It's analogous to the anterior acetabular line. It comes down and stays separate from the posterior acetabular line. In other words, they never cross each other. On the other hand, if they cross each other, when you trace them and they make a figure of eight, it means that one has become more anterior to the other, and then they've switched positions. We'll see what we mean by this again in the cross-sectional analysis. Here's an axial view showing the anterior acetabular wall in which the femoral head fits and the posterior wall. The anterior wall is more medial than the posterior wall. It stays more medial throughout a series of slices from craniad to caudad. Another small pearl. The posterior acetabular rim stays near the center of the femoral head. In contrast, at another locus, when the anterior acetabular rim is now more lateral than the posterior acetabular rim, there has been a crossover phenomenon. The anterior rim has gone from more medial relative to the posterior rim to more lateral relative to the posterior rim. This is also known as acetabular retroversion. So this crossover phenomenon is a manifestation of acetabular retroversion and also a manifestation of a deep acetabular cup, so-called acetabular protrusion. When the patient's leg is placed in internal rotation, 
the enlarged anterior acetabular wall, which makes an elongated, sharp, pointed edge, rakes the neck of the femur. And instead of producing a pseudocyst, it produces a long, scooped out edematous erosion. Some folks refer to this as the pincer type of FAI or femoroacetabular protrusion for the anterior and posterior walls of the acetabulum are likened to the pincer mechanism of a crab claw. In FAI 2, the internal rotation flexion position and the enlargement of the anterior wall presses against the anterior cartilage and the anterior fibrocartilage producing maceration of these structures. These are known as crushing type direct coup injuries. These coup injuries may lead to dystrophic ossification or an ossicle. A contra coup injury may also ensue because the anterior wall is longer and more lateral than the posterior wall. It pushes the femoral head backwards. Not only does it displace it, it also rotates it. This rotation of the femoral head backwards produces pressure against the posterior acetabular cartilage, leading to a shearing injury in rotation of the hip known as a contra coup injury, away from the site of initial impact that we described several slides ago. Here's what it looks like. This is a professional baseball catcher. This hip is horrible. On a frontal water-weighted spur sequence, the free edge of the acetabulum is eroded. The labrum is torn. The labrum is deformed. It has a large pincer-type appearance. The capsule is swollen. And from the persistent raking of the acetabular and labral edge along the neck of the femur, a long line of edema has occurred. The femoral neck does not have a bump or a cyst, as in FAI1 or CAM1 impingement, but the arthritis is severe. And it appears that the femoral head is being sucked into a very deep acetabular cup, the so-called phenomenon of acetabular protrusion. In the sagittal projection, the complex character of labral and macerated cartilage injuries are seen. Other areas of cartilaginous injury more posteriorly, corresponding to coup in the front and contra coup injuries in the back, are consistent with FAI2, or pincer type impingement. We said that anteriorly, these foci may ossify, producing an ossicle. That ossicle represents most often an area of dystrophic calcification or a break in a spur. It may interfere with the hip flexion internal rotation mechanism. It may contribute to acetabular retroversion. The anterior column of the acetabulum is more lateral than the posterior column. And thus, it forces the femoral head posteriorly and into a posterior rotated position, the phenomenon of retroversion. And the cup is too deep, thus the phenomenon of Acetabular protrusion is also achieved, and the two pincers are seen wrapping around the femoral head and the axial projection. In the coronal projection, severe advanced osteoarthritis with complete loss of cartilage, bony ebernation, osteoedema, erosions, and large pincer crab claw spurs superiorly and inferiorly are seen on the coronal T2 and on the coronal T1 weighted image, where severe premature unilateral osteoarthritis is seen in the right hip compared with the left. Another example of severe advanced FAI. On the viewer's left, a T2 weighted image with loss of cartilage, osteoedema, capsular swelling, and on the T1 weighted image, synovial thickening, hypertrophy of the acetabulum, and extensive muscular atrophy since the patient is barely using the hip due to persistent pain. 
This axial high-resolution unilateral projection shows the anterior acetabular wall broken off, creating an elongated ossicle in this patient with two, one anterior and one posterior pincer crab claws grabbing the poor, unfortunate femur, which is now osteoarthritic and has lost its cartilaginous layer with multiple subchondral erosions and diffuse capsular effusion and distension. The sagittal projection shows the same phenomenon. The pincer or crab claws extend way inferiorly in the front and way inferiorly in the back, appearing to suck the femoral head in to the acetabular space. Sometimes if you put a dot in the middle of the femur, that dot will be located within a line drawn from one acetabulum to the other, giving you a quick eyeball determination that there is acetabular protrusion and the femoral head is too far in as opposed to too far out and under covered. And on the right, the same phenomenon is displayed. An elongated spur in the front and spur in the back with a small dot placed in the middle of the femur located deep to a line drawn between the posterior wall and the anterior wall consistent with acetabular protrusion. So the end is here. You've seen that FAI2, or pincer type impingement, is primarily, but not exclusively, an acetabular process with a cup that's too deep, with edges that are protruding and grabbing the femoral head. In internal rotation and flexion, the femoral neck is raked. Typically, the femoral neck is not wide but is delicate and tapered. There is no bump cyst complex, but yet pressure against the anterior aspect of the acetabulum produces a coup injury, resulting in a severe labral tear, a severe cartilaginous erosion, and then a contra coup injury, and then eventually generalized very severe osteoarthritis. Thank you.